Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Shelved. Uh, today is a pretty fun episode. It's the first script we're looking at on the blacklist. And that script is called Ares. Now the writer is Geneva... God, I, I'm not sure about the pronunciation of this name. Geneva Robertson Dorett. And the draft is dated May 2015. And this was a really fun read. So this, uh, the Blacklist scripts, I don't have a ton of information on them. I haven't read any of them beforehand. Um, and all I kind of have is the log line, which I got from some other website that just like listed all the scripts. And, and I, my guests pick out all the scripts. And Eric Zisselman, who's coming back for the third time, he picked this script. And the log line was very interesting. So I was like, all right, this sounds really cool. Let's see what this is about. And I, I had no expectations going in. I didn't know if I was going to like it. I didn't know what it was going to be like. But I will say, as soon as I started reading, I was hooked almost immediately. It's a really interesting script. It's a script that is 100% fueled by the mystery of what is going on. And it's written very well. I, if anyone read it, I hope you'll agree. But I felt like it was written in a really good... Like, they didn't give too much away. They didn't... Uh, it's just like I don't want to spoil anything, but because it's it's definitely all about the mystery, and I try to string that along throughout the podcast and not give it away right away. Because it's it's definitely worth reading, though. If you if you get to this point, and you haven't read it, and you're interested in reading it, I would just say shut this off and go read it. It's a lot of fun. But yeah, we sat down, we had a good conversation about it. It was a little shorter than your average episode because like uh, when we talk about these like nerdier things like Spider Man and X Men and Batman. We all have a lot of love for that stuff, but when you're coming in cold on a script, um, it, it's it leads to some more interesting conversation for sure. But it's you know you you can only break out that conversation so far because you only have what's on the page versus what we know from the years of the things we love. But I still think this was a really fun episode, and I hope you really enjoy it. Um, be sure to leave a review for the show if you haven't already you can uh, search for the show shelved on itunes and just click on the reviews and rating section and it'll ask if you want to write a review right there it's real easy it's good for the algorithms to get this show pushed up the charts so more people can find it i i love doing this and i will do this as long as people are listening even if it's just one guy if i check my downloads and it says one i'm gonna keep doing it um but i, I want that number to be higher so if you leave a review we can definitely get that number up and more people will be listening. We can have more engageful conversations. So I urge people to just go ahead and leave a review. Take a few seconds. You can even just leave a rating. You don't have to write anything. You can just go leave, leave a rating. I'd be happy with that. But if you leave a review, I will read it on the show. All right. So we're just going to jump into it. Um, this is, again, Aries. And I'm sitting down for the third time guest or with my third time guest, Eric Zisselman. Just make sure you come in louder. I know it's early. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. So you ready to go? I am ready to go. All right. Um, so I think... I don't know where you're sitting at now. Mm -hmm. I think we sat on this one maybe a little too long. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I know that when I first started reading it, mm -hmm. I was really immediately captured by the mystery of it. And I think that mystery maintains through a good amount of this script. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the thing that kept me going. Like, because this is the first one we've done that isn't like some comic book property or something. Like, pretty much every podcast I've done so far has been something that we all know and right. can relate to. So this is the first one. It's like, hey, this is a totally blind read. Mm -hmm. And immediately gives me the effect of The Martian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I completely agree with you there. I was, um, like you, I was definitely excited to uh, jump into a uh, movie that is not of our common interests, yeah. uh, some uh, new sci-fi flick that yeah. uh, neither of us have knew anything about, um, came in blind, and uh, you did mention that the start of it uh, definitely throws you into the into the movie immediately. With, yeah, uh, like it's just... Media, well, not the media, the, but the, the pod. The pod coming flashing through the earth and it's uh it it feels very um 
claustrophobic uh, starting yeah. out a little bit, but um, it, it really gets you excited immediately. Yeah, and it made it, like, as you said, it feels claustrophobic because it starts off in a capsule, but then mm-hmm. immediately drops him into a big empty desert and somehow makes that empty desert still feel claustrophobic and frightening. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I would love to see. I don't remember if they mentioned the exact location uh, in Africa. They just Africa. keep mentioning somewhere in Africa, and they, they talk about a town over and over again, which starts with an A. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think I have it somewhere here in my notes, but I never actually looked up to see if that was a real town. Yeah, no, I, I was just... In my head, um, you know, he, he crash lands in the desert, which, um, you know, uh, Sahara Desert, I don't think it was the Sahara Desert because no. that thing, that's huge. Yeah. And it'd be tough to just find someone because, I mean, the, the movie starts rolling. You know, yeah, he like crashes really and, you know, next thing you know, people find him and yeah. uh, apparently he's wanted before he even fucking lands on the planet. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, we keep getting all this information. Like, he knows that people are looking for him. Mm-hmm. We have no idea why. We right. have no idea what he's doing. And it starts to kind of give you hints that what is the thing he's doing? Did it actually even happen? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, there's the whole mystery of, is this guy kind of hallucinating or making stuff up? Cause the very first thing he does is he takes the, the like coolant or antifreeze out of the pot. Mm-hmm. And this is what I was talking about. I was like the Martian. It's just him kind of spitting scientific facts about this stuff. Yeah. And then it's, can I drink you? Mm-hmm. Which he does. And then we just get a lot of implications that, like, this guy is hallucinating like fucking crazy because yeah. he's dehydrated drinking antifreeze in the desert. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's tough to uh, navigate what is true and uh, what is his hallucination throughout the beginning of the movie. And I would say even throughout, like, three-fourths of the movie because it isn't really until near the end where you start learning, that, like, oh, some of this stuff is actually true. Right. Yeah, that, you know, I, that's, uh, I think that's part of the point of the earlier part of the movie, just really testing your, as, as uh, someone in the audience, your, um, your mental just for taking what, what's given to you on the screen, you know? Yeah, and for me, I don't know about you, but, like, I feel like a lot of movies are fairly predictable nowadays. Mm-hmm. And throughout this, I was never really sure where it was going. Yeah. And that was kind of what interested me and what kept me going throughout the script. And, like, yeah, in the beginning, it's kind of like, okay, you know, we get the setup. The first mm-hmm. 10 pages of a script are usually pretty boring because yeah. that's, like, character setup and stuff like that. But once you get past that, it's like, oh, man, what is going on here? And I, it was literally like a book I couldn't put down for a little while. Yeah, it took me it took me a moment to find my groove, but uh, completely agree with you. It's, yeah. um, when, once you get into it, once your interest is there, uh, it's a lot of fun to read. Yeah, absolutely. And this script does have kind of a construct of flashbacks, mm-hmm. which we talked yeah. about before. So... And the way they write it, it's basically implying that, like, let's say he's drinking water in the in the scene, and then mm-hmm. it flashes back to another scene, and it always kind of flashes back to him doing the same thing. Right, like he's drinking water in the present, flashes back to a bar where he's right. also he's drinking leaning something. over yeah. a bar or something, and then yeah, it goes from what him uh, him drinking the green coolant to like, to, like him, him having drink- an apple martini or yeah, something basically. of the same color. Yeah. So I mean, as a as a I guess as a reader, I could picture kind of i mean in my mind it seems kind of stupid the yeah. way i picture it but um but you I, know, at the same time i like the way they did it sure like, no, I, I understand where they're coming it's, from. yeah it's explained in a way that's easy to understand mm-hmm. and it makes sense editing wise you know you can picture it in your mind very clearly yeah i i just know that um because there were so many flashbacks we have to it, you gotta be careful that you're yeah that you're constantly moving forward uh, yeah. You know, in, instead of uh, getting uh, messed up and kind of caught up in these flashbacks. Yeah, because in the beginning, they are coming very fast and heavy. Right, like, right. They kind of slow down as the movie goes on. But in in the beginning, it's like every two pages, we're mm-hmm. in a flashback. Yeah, which, uh, you know, for someone uh, like myself that doesn't read uh, too many scripts, yeah. I was kind of thrown aback by trying to picture, like, oh, my God, this is a fuck ton of flashbacks. What yeah. am I... What is going on here? Like, I I did like the construct, but in the beginning, I was a little worried. Like, man, is this going to be happening mm-hmm. through the entire mm-hmm. script? And it, as I said, it does slow down. Yeah, of course. It, it you know it, it finds its pace and yeah, uh, you but know, it, it, it is, is a little overwhelming good stuff. Um, what did you uh, think of you know the uh, the kind of feelings that uh, it, it halfway well I guess a quarter of the movie in it kind of turned into the transporter. You know, with um, uh, with the car chases and uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of liked it, but it we don't really understand 
and I guess it doesn't get too crazy in the action, so maybe mm-hmm. it does make sense. But this guy, he's he's an astronaut. So right. like we get his backstory. If he was an astronaut, there was going to be a mission to Mars, mm-hmm. and that mission gets canceled. Right. But somehow it's implied. Then that's that what kind of what leads into the question. Like, oh, is this real? Did mm-hmm. he really go to Mars? Because right. as far as we know, this mission is canceled, and we find out more about that later. But um, he's just like an astronaut, and right? Like, where would this action prowess come from? But like I said, there's not a lot of action. It is basically mm-hmm. just like a car chase. And like right. he has a gun. Yeah, I guess you got a point there. I mean, it's uh, when you're reading it, it is pretty descriptive. Of, yeah. You know, uh, zooming through uh, small African uh, streets and uh, going through the bazaar. And next yeah. thing you know, uh, people coming at him with a, with, with a tire chain or something. Yeah. So. Like, it reminded me of something out of, like, the Bourne Identity. Or yeah, like right. Exactly. Yeah. But it, just like the chase aspect, not mm-hmm. him beating the shit Absolutely. out of people. Completely. Uh, yeah, it was... Um, it, it, it was interesting to uh, to jump into that part. Um, I wasn't expecting uh, so much action in this movie. But, yeah, I was uh, expecting a little more espionage its... type stuff. Right, right. Because... I thought a little bit slower. Yeah. And I'm trying to think if there is really any other big action moment other than that car chase. And that's kind of the only one I can think of. Uh, they... Yeah, I guess besides uh, maybe oh, not really action wise, but maybe at the end when he was, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. MacGyvering the, 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 the pod. pod. Yeah. yeah. And we do get so in the beginning he's wandering the desert and then he gets picked up by these tribe people uh-huh. who kind of help him and th- th- he's trying to get to town mm-hmm. and we find out that his wife is in town that's why he's trying to get there but they introduce this mercenary character Novak I think his name right. was and this character doesn't really get a lot of play in the movie like I thought he was going to be the person kind of stalking him throughout the mm-hmm. movie and he kind of only shows up in the beginning in the end and like you get a little bit of him in the middle but he doesn't really do anything yeah. No, and you're right about that. I was kind of curious, like, why introduce this mercenary character? And it's implied that not like a mercenary army, but they have like a few guys. Mm-hmm. And it's like, why introduce these characters? Then they don't do anything. Well, I mean, uh, you got to have your side characters, uh, which I mean, you know, not everyone could have uh, a bunch of dialogue. But I do think that it showed, uh, you know, because this Novak guy worked for uh, the Russian billionaire, correct? Yes. So I I'm, mean, I'm trying we, to remember. I'm trying to look through my notes, find his name. Right. Yeah. Um, there, there's got Sir, Sirkov. Yeah. Sirkov. Right. So, I mean, I guess this Novak is just an extension of Sirkov, just to yeah. show how strong this. But guy's, at the same uh, time, we don't see a lot of Sirkov either. He doesn't true. show up till about halfway through. Right. And then you know we get more information on him. But yeah, like these are the core villains of the mm-hmm. story, and they don't really do much, which leads me to wonder: like, is this more of a? You're okay. Just. Uh, is this more of a first draft thing? Like, were these characters going to be expanded a little mm-hmm. more or wiped out completely? Because, like, as I said, there's not much action. And I think if they wanted to add more action, they really could have expanded on this Novak character. No, I agree with you. Uh, there definitely isn't that much action. But I do feel like this is more of a uh, a sci-fi flick. Just seeing yeah. as how it, it's more of a... Uh, we're breaking down the character of... Uh, what, what's our main character's Evan. name? Uh, Evan's, uh, Evan has had... Uh, hell of a life um, from, yeah. from which shows from the flashbacks um, yeah like so, right away in the flashbacks we learn that basically all he's ever cared about is being an astronaut that's and right like, and he, he's a big picture guy you know? yeah and that's something that comes up throughout the thing absolutely and they're always like big picture is like a right. quote throughout the movie right so I feel like that uh, a lot of this movie is is character based and uh, really trying to push along who Evan is and who his family is and how you know, things have fallen apart through yeah. the years with them. So, I mean, I'm not, I I understand exactly where you're coming from, where Novak isn't getting that much play, or we don't know too yeah. much about Surkov, but it's not their movie. I no, feel it, like, you know, at the core is, of this script, it's a it's a little espionage mixed with like family drama. Right, right. So, I guess you know, it's not always a bad thing that we don't know that much about Surkov. No. Um, it it, uh, it allows us to uh, you know kind of weave our own tales here before uh, before the actual movie comes playing out in front of us. But um, I I know exactly where you're coming from. I just think that uh, this is more about Evan and his struggle Absolutely. about uh, the hallucinations, about uh, how we didn't get to go to Mars. How next thing you know, some fucking Russian billionaire shows up. It's like let's go to fucking Mars. I'm with you, Evan. <laughs> yeah. So it's, like uh, yeah, yeah, the definite. 
draw to the script is like what's next like mm-hmm. you're constantly giving little bits of information and it's just the breadcrumb trail to make you wonder like man what the fuck is going exactly. on exactly because yeah. yeah when we first started reading it like we get about 30 pages in and i come talk to you i'm like yeah like have you started reading mm-hmm. and we're both like man like this is we're really interesting it. right yeah, away yeah. And I, I do think it, it kind of trails a little bit in the middle, mm-hmm. um, like because we basically we just start getting flashbacks and we learn more about the family. About his, he has a wife Chloe mm-hmm. and a son whose na- name I was trying to buffer up on the names uh, before. Yeah. Um, but it's it's kind of a classic story of they split up because he he wasn't able to accomplish what he wanted to accomplish in life mm-hmm. and the son blamed the mom it's right. something we've seen before right and you know obviously let's throw in some alcoholism there which yeah, is always uh, fun yeah cuz they do the whole thing like so one of the, like the first flashback we get is him meeting his wife mm-hmm. which is the whole point of what he's trying to do is he wants to get to this town to find his wife mm-hmm. and get him to safety because he knows that people are coming after him but we don't know why yeah can we just uh mention how um how hard it must be flying through space to fucking pinpoint i'm going to africa and i'm yeah. gonna land in this desert which is uh you know i listen 200 miles which, i think it, it, that's that's not a bad estimate you know that's like uh me saying no. I'm, I'm aiming for Chicago, but I landed in, uh, what, Milwaukee? Yeah. Probably something like that. So it, it's not that's not bad. No, but like let's also be honest how fucking impossible that would be because they're flying blind. Like yeah. They say that because this is a mission that's done in secret. Yeah. And they're like, they're, you have no mission control, mm-hmm. which would never fucking work. Like He's a very capable astronaut. Yes. Yeah, he's incredible. Yeah, and they imply there's a lot of stuff given in the flashback. Say, mm-hmm. like, yeah, this guy's fucking best of the best. Yeah. That's, and this that's is what true. he's been training to do his whole life. So it's it's believable. Yeah, that. they they had some uh, great fr- flashbacks where um you know he's in uh, what isolation chambers and yeah. uh, you know what he's in there for like uh, ninety or a hundred days. Yeah. So it's uh it definitely I I, I enjoy how the flashbacks um not only. Uh, help the audience but they definitely give me insight into his character and how yeah. driven of a person he is and, and this is definitely a, a character piece of a story yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's all about Evan and his connection with his mm-hmm. family and the flashbacks generally focus on like one of three things it's either how like how he's dealing with his wife and his kid right um What's going on with the mission to Mars, mm-hmm. and then all the dealings with the Surkov guy, right? And what he has in his uh, in the pod. What did yeah. he bring back? Yeah. So he. Oh, I, yeah. So I guess a fourth thing would be what actually happened on the mission, right? Like, which there's only like one scene on Mars mm-hmm. in the script because it's not about that. It's right. about what does he have? Yeah. So th- through the movie, like when they land, he takes something out of the pod. Mm-hmm. And it's all about them, like the bad guys, Surkov. They're trying to get this thing. Yeah. And we don't know what it is. Some kind of maybe material. Well, I, I think it's implied that it's a material. Yeah. That uh, potentially is uh, energy saving or something that could. And, uh, that, and that was kind of my assumption. Yeah, and right. It basically confirms to be some sort of mineral that's way more powerful mm-hmm. than plutonium. Right. And obviously that would be a very bad thing. Um but yeah, I mean, before we get there, it's a lot of... So we see him in training. Like you said, he was in the uh, the chamber. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, isolation. Yeah, right. the isolation chamber. And they pull him out basically to tell him that the mission is canceled. Yeah, that's got to suck. Yeah, and this Fuck. is something he's been working for his whole life. And then we get like, oh, he's trying to fight with NASA to mm-hmm. get the mission refunded and right. blah, blah, blah. All the while, he's a fucking alcoholic yeah. and trying to... Uh, pitch proposals to Mars while being drunk. Yeah, and they're basically like, yeah, you know, we're not going to listen to this proposal while your breath smells like that. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's demeaning. Yeah, <laughs> it just shows that, like, this is what this guy cared about, which really makes you think, like, man, why did this guy even have a family? Yeah. Because he treats them like complete shit. Uh, which, I mean, leads to them separating at one point. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, I got to think it's got to be tough on a family unit. I mean, uh, being an astronaut is one of those 150% jobs that if you're not in, you're you're out. Yeah. I mean, And it sounds like he was just one of these guys that went above and beyond yeah. even what a normal astronaut mm-hmm. might be doing. Right, right. His only dream is to fucking go to Mars, to be that guy. Yeah. And it basically just destroys their marriage, but not before their son almost dies in a plane crash. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was kind of nuts in that. So. Yeah, it's so they have this plane, and the dad is clearly drunk as mm-hmm. as he usually is throughout the middle of the script, right? And well, in the flashbacks, 
And um, yeah, he's like having an argument with his kid while they're in a plane. Like it's, it seems to be just like a single engine, like almost crop duster style right, right. plane. And the kid just takes off in it. Well, you know, I can't really fault the dad. I mean, the kid's a prick. He just yeah, fucking, he's kind of an asshole. He's, yeah, he's like, get out of the fucking plane. Next thing you know, he's like, see you later, dad. Yeah, and then I actually like the way they strike, like the wording of the scene and everything. Like when they talk about. Like basically trying to the kid trying to land the plane, right? And like you know it's going to go bad because obviously, and the way that was done, like they don't show you the wreck or anything, they don't even mm-hmm. really describe to you. It just kind of cuts away, yeah. and, but like it, it's powerful enough because like you know what happened, right? And then we do get introduced to the kid later on, and you see that he has like some scarring, and some yeah, damage. and he's he's kind of a prick now. And yeah, oh, he's a, he's an know. asshole. <laughs> And of, and of course, it's all the mom's fault. Yeah, like, even yeah, though the, hardworking mom. Yeah, and it's like even though Evan is clearly a bad father throughout the, the, all these flashbacks, mm-hmm. somehow the kid still blames the mom. Like, yeah. oh, it's your fault. It's he your left. fault. He left. Yeah, yeah. You, you were too much of a bitch to my dad. So yeah, like I, I thought the writing with the kid, that whole storyline was a little cliche uh-huh. and a little like. It just it needed another pass. It just didn't yeah, make sense to me. Yeah, uh, I guess you know that's the thing with uh, with kids in uh, in movies. I mean, not everyone could be uh, such a deep character because we all know teens are fucking just stupid young people. So that's uh, it's just the yeah. way it works. Um, I will say my favorite part of the script is definitely like the first half. So <laughs> which is where all the mystery is. So right. it kind of makes sense because it's what's driving uh, the plot forward. But uh, I really like the like sneaking around, like how I mentioned espionage stuff. Right. So like he lands, he gets picked up by this tribe, and then the Novak and his mercenaries come, and it's him hiding around the camp as right. they're searching the camp. I love all that stuff. And then he gets put on a tour bus, basically to this. Uh, yeah, and they, they caught me the off village. guard. Yeah, yeah, that really surprised me. I thought he was at like some fucking bush gardens place that. Uh, uh, they they were bringing in people to to watch the I guess yeah, it's, it's like, like a, a human tor- zoo almost yeah basically and they're like oh yeah look at these tribesmen holding machine guns yeah that, and like, that kind of threw me off for a second I mean yeah. but you know once again that that's part of the fun of reading this uh, this interesting script you know yeah it's like what kind of like is this real world what kind of world mm-hmm. is this taking place in because as far as I know there's no tours like that but I've never fucking yeah been I've there. never been to Africa so uh, you know count me out on that one yeah but um and then so they he gets on this tour bus and they stop at a town and his way of getting the word out is leaving a YouTube message mm-hmm. which we never hear about again <laughs> yeah but I, I like the idea of it yeah well when he went to the internet cafe and yeah he was uh, in the burqa and everything yeah, people were after him yeah that that seemed like uh, definitely felt like out of uh, the Born Identity or the yeah, Born movie, or like a James That's Bond what movie I felt like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like the, the early espionage moments mm-hmm. of this script, where it's like, man, is this guy a spy? Like, what is going on? Right, like, and the message that he records are like, uh, you know, it my gives name you is just blah, enough, blah. Yeah, but he gets you need cut to off. hear from me. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's good stuff. Yeah, th- those were the moments that like really drew me in, and I like that was the point because that's like the first ten or fifteen pages. Mm-hmm. That was the point where I was completely drawn in at this yeah. point. I remember, yeah, you told me you couldn't really put it down uh, over the weekend, so yeah. yeah, I was excited to keep reading. Yeah, and that that leads to him stealing the car mm-hmm. that eventually gets, because right. the mercenary guys kind of descend on this town, mm-hmm. and so he steals some dude's car, and so I did find the name of the town, it's called Addis. Addis? Yeah, that's, or A-D-D-I-S is how it's spelled, so I don't, yeah, I don't know if it's a real town or not, but that is the city where he's trying to get to his wife. Okay. Which, uh, yeah, so he steals the car, and then it basically just, he's like, kind of gets to Addis with little issue. Yeah, it's uh, it's the capital of Ethi- Ethiopia. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. So, uh, so yeah, it is a real I place. There, is a, uh, there must be some desert. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's yeah, they never, tell you what, they never tell you what country he's in or anything. Mm-hmm. It's never like Ethiopian desert or anything. Right, right, yeah. I, I recall doing my own research on this, trying to figure out where the fuck this guy landed. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that was something I meant to look up and just never got around to. Um. So yeah, he after he steals his car, he basically shows up in Addis, mm-hmm. and that's where we see Novak for the first, or not Novak, uh, Surkov for the first time. Mm-hmm. And we do, we don't know anything about him. We just know that Evan recognizes this guy, and he's right. like, "Oh, this fucking dude." And he's contemplating killing him. Yeah, and then he sees his wife, Chloe, mm-hmm. um, which then leads to Surkov was going to meet Chloe, right? Or... I think he was just watching her from a distance. Okay, and gotcha. Evan kind of rec- sees both of them, so mm-hmm. he's like, "Well, I need to get Chloe's attention." Right. So he gets someone to basically lure her into this building mm-hmm. where he's, he gets a kid right yeah he, he pays some kids yeah, off some to, kid. just to come talk to him yeah just like hands him a pocket full of mm-hmm. cash and just like yeah like get her in there right and then like because at this point we don't know what his relationship with his wife is right like, we clearly have gotten some flashbacks where we see that there was trouble in paradise but um 
we don't know at this point, like, as far as I, I thought, like, she was waiting for him to come back. Mm-hmm. But it's like, no, it turns out they haven't talked in years, and she's like, what the fuck are you doing here? Right. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, she's moved on. Yeah. She has a new business. She is, she's, she's starting up fucking... She has a new husband? Yeah, they say because she's wearing a wedding ring. <laughs> okay, and... right, right. Well, but she doesn't, because that, uh, that was like the trick oh, of yeah, the men, kid, right? Yeah, the kids said that it was a lie. Okay, yeah. Yeah, see? Yeah, I, okay. I read it. I read yeah, it. So I she says that she has a new husband. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, you're right. Uh, so... Yeah, so he lures her into the building, and then this is where the chase starts. Uh So she's clearly very resistant with him, but he basically drags her along, and then they get chased by Surkov's men. Yeah, there's a lot of times when uh, she's telling him, you're crazy, you're hallucinating, is this uh, this something that you think is happening? Because, I mean, listen, uh, you're seeing your husband that you haven't seen in, what, uh, five? I think they say three years. Three years. He's he he's fucking like a and last zombie. time they saw him he's he had a gaunt. drinking problem. Yeah, he has drinking problem. He he's got like skin and bones because yeah. he's just fucking came he's from Mars. Dehydrating in a desert. He's wearing a burqa and he just sent some fucking little girl to come uh, get you in there. Yeah. So I'd be i and I'm pretty sure he had a gun on him and he pulled a, yes, gun, he has a gun on on someone just so that she would stay and listen to him. So it's a uh, there's a lot of tension. <laughs> a lot yeah. of tension. So one thing that. So when he gets put on the bus, the tour bus, he's put on there by the villagers who mm-hmm. saved him, and they give him a gun and tell him to kill the police chief, and that really? never really comes up again. I don't, I don't really remember. She's just that. like, yeah, she. So that's where he gets his gun. They give him like a oh, pistol. The, yeah, the villagers, right? Okay, yeah. yes, and yes, they're like the villagers. They're like, you go kill the police chief, and he's right. just like, what? Yeah, and he, never he really... clearly said, I'm not gonna fucking do that. It, yeah. he had he had bigger problems to deal with. Yeah. It, it never comes up again. Like the police get involved a little bit because mm. they're they're the ones who end up capturing him later. Right, right. So it's clear that Surkov has the police in his pocket, basically. Yeah. But yeah, this whole thing with the police chief never comes up again. Yeah, which is you know it's okay. It's just a small request at the behest yeah. of uh, you know these African warlords. Yeah, and it just shows this guy's kind of like in over his head. Mm-hmm. He's right, like, right. I'm, I'm fucking in the middle of the desert. I'm lost. Right. I have no idea. What's He's going on a tour on. bus and they hand him the gun through the or a purse, right? A purse with yeah. the gun inside through he's the still, window. Yeah, he's still wearing yeah, the burqa. I, I could definitely picture all of this happening. Yeah, it, it's just it's just an odd thing. And mm-hmm. again, yeah, it's one of those things that never comes up again. Right. Um. So yeah, so he picks up Chloe, and then that leads to them. We they got to go find their son, who's mm-hmm. Danny. That's his name. And that's where we find out he's just like a little shit. Like that he's ditching school and he's basically out partying with his friends. Right. On right. some field or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. And then. He's so excited to see his dad because, again, he blames his mom for everything that goes on, which then later leads us to the scene where Evan's like, no, I was the asshole. And somehow this kid is just so surprised. Yeah. It'd be like, listen, your mom's the fucking shit. She's the real deal. I'm the prick. I'm the one that left. Mm -hmm. Right. And like it almost seemed like he was lying. Like, the way he says yeah. it. Well, he was making his wife look better in the eyes of their son. So, yeah. I mean, it, it, it was for the right reason. Yeah. It, it was just, it was kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this kid, he's just like a little shit. Like, basically, all he does is swear and talk about how much of a piece of shit his mom is. Yeah. And how his dad's the best. Wasn't there a, a point where he wouldn't leave and his mom pulled the gun out or something and shot into the air? Yeah. And like, then he's, he's like, holy shit, my mom's crazy. He, no, when they find him on the field, he starts to run. You know, like how kids get caught busted. Oh they all God. start running. And so, yeah, she shoots a gun into the air. And he's like, whoa, what the fuck? You know, and he yeah. like drops down. What a pain in the ass. I yeah. couldn't imagine. I you mean, just being to... a parent. I mean, and you <laughs> fucking finally find your kid and he's in some fucking field and I, this i'm just talking for all parents i guess i mean yeah i have to pull out a gun to stop my fucking son and shoot it in the air because he's too busy running from his fucking mom it's uh it's yeah gonna be, it's and, gonna be rough and it's implied that the kid hasn't even seen the mom in a while because he was sent to school kid's a prick yeah i mean this whole family is just all over the mm-hmm. place no, i agree with you um yeah <laughs> so this is yeah we finally get them all brought together mm-hmm. and, and now it's just the question of like is he crazy or not right, right. because the idea this is when we start kind of learning more about what's going on like oh he this billionaire Surkov helped fund this private mission to mars because he's like that's where the next race is going to be that's where like all these natural resources are going to be right, we yeah. have to get there first which is a f- fucking crazy idea to think that somebody could fund this privately. Oh yeah, I mean, well, you know, uh, just looking at our uh, our current, um, you know, re- realistically, if we're ever going to go to Mars, it seems like the best uh, 
prospects are going to be someone like Elon Musk or some kind of yeah. hyper billionaire that's going to throw money into it instead of yeah. NASA. So but I mean, you, know, you got to think of a billionaire is going to do that. Like it costs like seven billion dollars to know build it. one of these rockets. I anyway. know it. I, I, if, you, if you're if you're the real deal, that's uh, that's fucking chump change. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, once someone gets up there and fucking starts drilling for all the resources, yeah, they'll and make that's their money the, back. And in that's fucking the idea. Tenfold, so, um, so this is where we start kind of seeing more of the actual mm-hmm. mission, yep. which it's we still don't like find out about the mineral he has until mm-hmm. after all this. But it's like we get views of them on Mars. Yeah. Um, they're finding minerals. And one of the guys is kind of acting like he knows more what, of what's going on. Right. And it, I think they're all kind of different nationals. So we got Evan, who's an American. And then we got a Russian and I think a Chinese. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's just the three of them. Yeah. And again, no contact with Earth. Very, very small mission. They don't yeah. want too many people knowing about this. And so the, basically they go there, they collect some shit, and yeah. then they're on their way back. And all of a sudden they start getting sick. Yeah. Or the first guy gets sick. Mm-hmm. And I guess he just dies. Yeah, something like uh, I th- maybe some kind of like respiratory failure or something. Yeah, with they his, never uh, explain what it actually <clears throat> kills him. Right, it, it's just it just he kind of fades out, and he I, I believe he whispers something to the Chinese. He uh, says that he was supposed to be the one to make it. Mm-hmm. So we get the idea that he was in on That's it. Pretty was fucking Sarkov. crazy. You yeah, say that shit right before he died. <laughs> yeah. Oh my like, god. What the fuck are these other two guys supposed to right. think? Like, are we fucking next? Right. So then the Chinese guy gets sick. And he kind of mm-hmm. starts having the same thing. So, right. And he had to kill him, didn't he? Or- so, like, earlier in the movie, we get flashbacks of Evan slitting somebody's throat mm-hmm. in the space pod. Right. And blood. Uh, yeah, zero like, G blood everywhere. Yeah, floating. And, and, like, we just... It's one of those things that leads you to believe, is this guy just fucking crazy? Mm-hmm. Like, is... What is going on? Is Evan the fucking bad guy? Is he a murderer? Cinematically, that sounds pretty cool, just uh, yeah. thinking about it. Yeah, and so we find out that he was sick, and he was basically like, you have to kill me, because mm-hmm. like, for one, I'm suffering. I'm not going to make it. There's yeah. not enough food for both of us, because there was only supposed to be food for one person. Right. And so basically, he's, he's like, Evan, you have to kill me. And Evan's like, no. So the guy starts doing it himself. Right. But then he can't continue <laughs> mm-hmm. so then evan has to grab it and finish yeah he has the job. to finish uh slitting his throat i guess or yeah something like and it's it, just the way they kind of sprinkle all these moments throughout mm-hmm. the script is again the, the mystery is done so well in the script mm-hmm. like one of my favorite um like genres aside from sci-fi is mystery and like noir and stuff yeah. like that and this feels kind of like a modern noir story um maybe not noir so much as just like a straight up mystery but um it's it's just handled so well, right? And I was not expecting that from this script at all, because like we we were originally drawn in by the original log line. It's like you know there's something going on, right? But like just the way it's just sprinkled throughout the story, I just I loved it so much. No, oh, yeah, I, I completely agree. I thought uh, the way that they handled the the flashbacks at the start was uh, was kind of concerning to me, but yeah. Um, uh, a lot of the flashbacks were extremely powerful, so I, I definitely jumped into the story, and it helped me uh, immerse myself in what was going yeah, on. Yeah, and the fact that they slow down. It's totally. Because, like, yeah, I thought it was going to be every two pages through this whole script. Right, we had to get to the present. So yeah. after after we finally got to where we needed to be, the movie, uh, the movie started cruising. Yeah, like basically once he gets to Addis is when it mm-hmm. everything just kind of like, okay, now we can go, and mm-hmm. then we don't get any more flashbacks really until we need to find out what's going on with this mission. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, that leads to so we, so now we get the whole family together, yeah. and then this leads to them getting captured because the wife just completely does not trust him. Right. And yeah, this is the scene where we're talking about where we find out that her wedding ring is fake, and yeah, he says that like, oh, you moved on and you got married, and the kids like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, she just wears that. She so calls him out on it. Finally, yeah. the fucking kid did something right. Yeah, and then he, I think, proceeds to call her a bitch. <laughs> Prick. <laughs> yeah, he's seriously so bad. Um, but yeah, I will say I was kind of a sucker for the big picture thing. Mm-hmm. Like throughout the scripts, he's always talking about, you know, anything he's doing is just looking at the big picture. Right. Like I'm going through this like crazy training because big picture, I'm going to go to Mars. Right. And I was kind of a sucker for the way that kept popping up, especially at the end where big picture suddenly becomes, I'm going to be famous and well known for this thing to I'm going to protect my family. Right. Yeah. It came down to what really matters. And, you know, his uh, his notoriety and his uh, celebrity uh, is fucking dwarfed by his his, uh, his love for his family. So, yeah, it's uh, it's nice to get that circle to come back around. Yeah. Because throughout the movie, we're getting a lot of hints that he just wants to be 
the guy. He yeah. wants to be famous, and mm-hmm. he's almost obsessed with it. Like, I'm going to be on Mars. I'm yeah. going to be the first human to go there. And that's all he cares about. No, I, I agree. Um, I thought it was... Uh, it is that big picture that uh, that is our, I guess, our window into the character. Because, yeah. you know, I, I, he, he is probably the most driven character outside yeah. of maybe Surkov, like, in the in the whole movie. And, I mean, it, you better be. The whole movie's about him. So, uh, yeah. again, it, I agree it, with you. And it's something his son shares. Mm-hmm. Like, when, when the son kind of comes into the, into the movie, they're... Whenever they're talking about anything, this kid's like, hey, dad, remember big picture. Like, you're going to be the guy. And right. then once, like, we get into the third act and Evan has kind of changed his mind, like, no, mm-hmm. the big picture is to save my family. The kid is still like, but it's what you've always wanted. Right. And, you know, he's... And Evan he has, has those dreams of him being on stage, you know, accepting yeah. and seeing his wife in the back, you know. Yeah. And, well, I guess those were more flashbacks to uh, dreams. So, he uh, again, he... he he realizes what really matters, which uh, yeah, which is pretty cool. Yeah, because we we come into the third act with they're trying to get to the American embassy, mm-hmm. and then this is where the cops come in, where they see them, and then they all basically get captured. And this was something maybe I was getting a little tired when I was reading this part, but somehow they end up in the hands of these like I don't even know if they were cops, but they're maybe like mercenaries or something. Yeah. But basically, they're people who want what evan has or they want the capsule yeah they're probably uh, some kind of private military company or yeah, someone it, that was hired to get it because they um, don't seem to be related to Surkov. they don't right. seem to be re- related to the police somehow they end up in these people's hands and right. i honestly can't remember how well, they do i couldn't imagine uh you know um his pod or his uh whatever's left of his spaceship uh coming into earth is gonna get the uh get the eyes of a lot of uh different governments or just at least something to you know uh, there better be people after him if uh, yeah. if it's not just the fucking like yeah. four people. Because this is the point where we know that Evan brought something back from Mars, mm-hmm. and we don't know exactly what it is at this point. But everybody knows he has it. Right. There's like a flyer going around of like, oh, this wanted man, and blah mm-hmm. blah blah, and everyone just keeps saying like, oh, he's crazy. Like his wife ends up on the phone with Surkov, yeah, and he's like, yeah, he's crazy for your protection. Just tell us where he is, and blah blah blah, and right. that's what leads to them getting captured. Mm-hmm. And because his wife just doesn't believe him. So then they get dragged out to the desert by these people and they're like, where's the capsule and blah, blah, blah. And that leads to like they try to find it and it's gone. So everybody, right. you're like, you, at this point, you're like, oh, fuck, he did make this. Right. Yeah. He says that he well, in the start of the movie, he buries the uh, the pod. Yeah. And then uh, and then which I know, don't know how much you could bury a giant fucking yeah, space. I was, pod. Yeah, I was definitely thinking that. I mean, he's fucking uh, what is it covering up with his fucking hands or something? Yeah. I mean, I assume he covered it with a parachute and then was kind of covering the parachute with yeah. some sand to maybe keep it there. Sure, sure. Because, yeah, there's no way you could fucking bury a pod that big with your hands in like five minutes. Yeah, you know, we keep saying pod. All I'm thinking of uh, is... I mean, is I think like, of the lander you see like when astronauts come back from like the fucking moon or something, okay. which is like a giant fucking pod. I mean, it had to hold three people. No, you're right. Yeah. Uh, here I am thinking of, uh, you know, Dragon Ball Z uh, Saiyan <laughs> pod. The, the no, little like fucking the little circle. Yeah, the, the <laughs> spears that come to Earth. No, I mean, I but, picture uh, the triangular fucking pod. Of course. Pod, yeah. Like yeah. the classic that's, one. Yeah, that's much more realistic. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, we don't really get a description of it. Just exactly. We know it's big enough to fit three people. Yeah. So that yeah, they go out there and it's just gone, mm-hmm. and you're just like, oh fuck, this guy. Right, is he crazy. goes there with his family. He tells everyone that we got to get to the spot. We got to get the fucking minerals. We got to yeah. cover up the fucking thing. And, and he's he's just like, no, it was here. This it's is where gone. I left it. Yeah. And I mean, then like two seconds later, we find out that that tribe who found him in the beginning mm-hmm. seems to have found the pot, and they're like taking it away. Right, right. So then it's like, oh, fuck. Like, he was right, and I am so sorry Mm -hmm. that I didn't believe you. Yeah. And, yeah, this leads to kind of like our next small little action scene where these, again, these people who I don't know who they are... um, they're basically just going to kill them. Yeah. What? The the military or the PMCs? Or yeah, they're going to kill yeah. Evan and his family. Yeah. Which, they, they get there. They uh, I think they, they grab the wife and the and Oh, the I son. think what happens, so Evan doesn't believe it, and he's like walking to where it should be, and he's mm-hmm. like, it was here. It was right, here. And they're right. like, hey, fucking stop, dude. And he just keeps walking, and he comes up over a dune, mm-hmm. and then he sees the pod. Yeah. They got it rigged to like cows that are like dragging it. Right, right. All he had to do was uh, walk another yeah. 20 feet. So then, yeah, that's when we find out it's true. And he ends up taking out the person, like one of the people, there was like two armed people that were with them. Right. And Evan takes out that one and you hear gunshots in the distance. You don't know what happened. And then right. you find out it sounds like the wife killed the other one. Mm-hmm. What, which, uh, what had, was it the son or was it the wife that I killed? think it was Chloe. Okay. She had somehow got a gun from that person, <laughs> that person. And, um, 
took basically took him out. They don't even really elaborate on it. <laughs> yes, um, I, I agree. So yeah, and then now we're just left out in the desert with this fucking pod, and now they believe him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then this is where Surkov kind of comes back in because she had already called him. Because they had the flyer, which like, oh, have you seen this person? Because they keep claiming claiming that he has like mining machinery, mm-hmm. and that's like, oh, he has this like classified mining machinery, as if that would ever be fucking classified. And they want it back, and that's why everybody's looking for him. So before they had found the pod, she had already called Surkov and be like, hey, we're out here in the desert. Yeah, she called him on the phone when yeah. uh, when he wasn't looking or something during the car chase. Yeah. yeah, and now that they're out there and she believes him, it's kind of like, oh, fuck, I already did this thing. Yeah, I and blew that, it. Yeah, and that's when Surkov shows up. Right, with all of his homies. Yeah. And yeah. then this leads us into the ending, which I think is a little unearned. Mm-hmm. Um because throughout the whole movie it's a lot of i need to protect my family which yeah yeah absolutely and, but we keep getting talk that like you're never going to be able to keep your family safe they're always going to be looking for you they're always going to be looking for this mineral but we don't know why like right. if he gets the mineral out of his hands why the fuck would anybody care about what happens to him i mean i guess oh, well, it's because yeah, he was a, on this secret mission yeah, yeah he's a loose end yeah, but it's like if he goes to the embassy and spills the secrets, at least from my point of view, right? Like, w- wouldn't America protect him? Be like, oh, we have this guy that was on Mars. Fuck every other country. We're the best. Ugh, believe me, we uh, we'd probably do the same shit that fucking yeah. any other country do. Just I mean, it just I, I they just didn't explain it enough in the script, right. I guess, for it, for it to make sense to me. Yeah, no, I I understand where you're coming from. I mean, I that's I would think that's more of a director's job to really uh, yeah. The, get it across to but us i mean i would argue that it's the writer's job because mm-hmm. i mean as f- this is a movie that hasn't been made so mm-hmm. we're all we have to go off is what's in the script sure but there's there's not enough they don't say who would be coming after him like yeah. if you kill Surkov, like who's left to come after him like is the united states government going to come after him if right. so why is the russian government going to come after him if so why it's kind of subtly implied that you know he's gonna have to forever watch his back if that kind of shit goes down yeah and then that gives us a kind of well, he's going to have to sacrifice himself. Mm-hmm. and uh, I mean, it's better for the movie uh, to have that, I guess, that part of the plot. But um, I, I know where you're coming from. It, it, it does feel it, a little it just uh, feels flat. Yeah. yeah. And that was one thing we had talked about is that we really enjoyed the script, but the ending definitely comes off a little flat. Yeah. No, I hear you. And yeah, that was just so disappointing to me because i was was really into it for the whole time yeah well now we see how how fucking hard it is to write a a complete awesome script you know i mean we enjoyed the first the second part of the movie and then it just kind of peters off a little bit so yeah and unless specifically specified on what draft it is Mm because sometimes when i'm finding these scripts it's like here's the second draft, here's the fucking fifth draft or here's the rewrite done by this person as far as i know this is the first draft right maybe this is something that could have changed in other drafts like if it got bought by a studio i don't know if anybody currently Mm -hmm. owns this one i don't think they do but that's something that it definitely seems like you like when the sony emails leaked and there everyone was talking about the james bond movie like they're reworking that third act because it's a mess I could see the same words going out about this movie is like this ending needs to be changed. Yeah. Because I I just feel like they could have done more with like the American embassy Mm -hmm. and like maybe add another character for him to be in contact with or something. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It did feel like a very small cast. Yeah. If we, uh, it, yeah, it's a it's like six people in this movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean aside from like some extras in mm-hmm. like the village or totally. whatever. But as far as like speaking roles, there's like five or six people. Yeah. I I agree. Um uh, what did you? What would you rate this movie? How many? Uh, what would you give the script? I mean, I really enjoyed reading the script. Mm-hmm. I would give it a solid four out of five. Like four if the movie five. came out this way, I'd be like, yeah, that was a really enjoyable movie with kind of a flat ending. Yeah, I hear you. I'd give it uh, probably uh, three, three and a half stars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. I. I mean, if sci-fi movies generally get a bump up for me, just no, I, I love sci-fi movies. Yeah. But like I said, I was a sucker for some of the flashback stuff. I was a sucker for the big picture thing, the way that kept coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, and just I pictured just the way I pictured it being directed in my head. Like I'm, t- I'm trying to think of a, like a, who would direct this movie. Yeah. And immediately that comes to my mind is Sam Mendes, who did Skyfall and Spectre. Okay. And he, I mean, he's done a bunch of other movies. I think he did American Beauty and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I think of like, because a lot of this movie takes place in the desert. And I think of the opening of Skyfall, just the way, I mean, he'd have to have the same cinematographer, but the way he makes the desert look and stuff, 
I feel like he would have been a really good director for this, and he can just make action so intense yeah. and so gritty. And I feel like that that was kind of like the first choice for a director that would pop in my head for this movie. Who would you uh who would you see as See, that's the thing. That Evan. I was I've been trying to think of somebody and they they definitely give you like an age range for this guy, like yeah. late thirties, early forties. And I just couldn't picture any actors of that age range that fit it for me. Like maybe somebody like Carl Urban, but I don't think he's the best choice. Carl Urban. Yeah, was, okay. Dread. Was, yeah. Yeah. Um but I mean I he's one of my, he's an actor I would kind of throw out for any role. I was thinking uh what's his name? Where is he? Uh Giovanni Rubisi. You know that guy? Yeah. Um Yeah. Kind of uh bit short for a uh uh yeah. an astronaut, but I do think that um you know, we're, we're looking at a guy who's just gone back from Mars and yeah. who's really um under a lot of stress and like just skinny yeah. and fucking tired and just beat up and I don't know something about uh, Giovanni. I recently started watching a uh, Sneaky Pete, so I don't know something about his character. Just uh, yeah, I mean, kind of comes off to me that he could play a jittery type of dude. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I think that would uh, that that would do it for me there. Like I guess I was like when I think about it, I was thinking more of like him during the flashback scenes. I picture more of like a Dennis Quaid type. Yeah, but I can't think of somebody I was thinking Aaron Eckhart a little bit. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, that would be a good one. Mm-hmm. But I, I couldn't think of anybody in like that was like Dennis Quaid, but at that age. You right, know? right. Because I just that age range of actors mm-hmm. is kind of lost on me right now. All right. Um, but yeah, I mean, do you have any final thoughts on the movie? Um, I thought it was a pretty cool script. Um. I think that, uh, like I said, I mean, I gave it three out of five stars, but um, I thought it was fun, and uh, I enjoyed reading something that uh, was a little bit out of our normal comfort zone. Yeah, and it's, it's again, it's things that, that like the mystery that kept me mm-hmm. going. There's a lot of really good dialogue. Yeah. Um, and yeah, some really good characters and characterization mm-hmm. of those characters. Um, but yeah, it's. I would see this movie if it came mm-hmm. out, like in a heartbeat. Like I'd even, check it out. Even you're reading this script and like hoping they change the ending, I would I would go see this right mm-hmm. away. I recommend it. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, thanks for joining me. And Thank you with me for, for having me. As we do this early in the morning around everybody. Yeah, it was a good time. <laughs> um, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, no, I, I definitely appreciate it. And again, if you need to find us on Twitter, you can always follow us at Shelved Podcast. Mm-hmm. And of course, email the show at shelvedfilmpodcast at gmail.com. Do you need to put out No, your no, I don't have any uh, any of those social media followings. Yeah, so, uh, I know we, we put out your you Twitter. Could, you could catch me on here. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for sitting with me. Bye.